it's always so great to have so, you know, so many passionate people. So many of you have been passionate about clean technology and about sustainability in all of its many forms. Um, to combine that passion with somebody who I just think of as the entrepreneur's entrepreneur, uh, the founder, CEO of Idea Lab, is just really uh, brings a, a whole uh, perspective of this that I'm very excited for you to hear. Please join me and welcome the CEO of uh, Idea Lab and a, a startup within that called Edison, Bill Gross. Bill? Thank you very much. Good morning. It's great to be here today. I'm excited to tell you why I believe that clean technology is a trillion dollar business opportunity. Now I know I'm preaching a little bit to the choir with this audience because many of you already believe this, but I'd like to share with you my perspective and how I came to this conclusion. I came to it quite early. I started dreaming about clean technology when I was 15 years old. I grew up in the San Fernando Valley in Southern California and it was right at the height of the energy crunch. It was 1973 and I don't know how many of you remember this, but you had a only, you only could buy $5 of gasoline per day, it was rationed, and you only could buy gasoline on odd or even numbered days based on the last digits of your license plate. So there were lines down the street. I remember Ventura Boulevard in San Fernando Valley, there were lines down the street for people waiting to buy gasoline. And even at that early age, I began thinking, there's got to be another way. There's got to be some way that we can get ourselves off of fossil fuels so we're not so reliant on that for the lifestyle that we have. So I did what I could. In, in, uh, junior, in high school and 10th grade, I started a little company called Solar Devices. And I started making little kits and plans to make solar devices to concentrate sunlight and convert heat energy to mechanical energy. And I made plans that I sold in the back of Popular Science magazine for $4. And I sold 10,000 of those plans, which helped me pay for my way through college, actually. And it was my first taste, both at business, at entrepreneurship, but also in renewable energy. And when I graduated from college, the IBM PC came out, I started writing software, started a software company that I sold to Lotus, started an educational software company that I sold to Vivendi, and I really had the entrepreneurial bug. I really realized what happens when you get a group of people together and you give them a high equity stake and you have a unified goal, a shared goal and mission, that you actually unlock human potential. I learned that about entrepreneurship and it was so powerful to me, I wanted to find a way to scale that. So I started a company called Idea Lab. It was a technology incubator, this was 1996, and it was a very risky idea at that time. It was kind of poo-pooed at the time, but it was to try and get all the resources, all the shared resources under one roof to try and help companies succeed. I wanted to try and have entrepreneurship factory. And over the years, it's now 20 years, we just had our 20th anniversary, we've started more than 150 companies in many different areas, and across all those companies, we, helped, we invested the first $250,000 in each company. So we would brainstorm ideas for products that are needed, services that are needed in clean tech and other areas. We would invest the first $250,000, and then we helped the companies raise additional outside capital. So across the years, we helped the companies raise more than $3.5 billion. Out of those 150 companies, 60 of them failed. So we learned a lot from those failures. But 90 of them have succeeded, and 45 of them went on to have successful IPOs and acquisitions. Seven of them went on to become more than $1 billion companies. We're most proud of the fact that we created more than 10,000 jobs because that whole idea of scaling entrepreneurship was the thing I was so passionate about. And what we focused on were big disruptive opportunities. So what's the biggest disruptive opportunity there is? Well, I think the clean tech opportunity is that, and, and here's why. Across the earth, everybody would like to live like us. The whole earth uses 15 terawatts. So 15 terawatts is being used by all 7 billion people on the planet. So about 2,000 watts per person for every man, woman, and child alive everywhere on Earth. 2,000 watts all day long, every day. Now, of course, you know that's not evenly distributed. Some people on the Earth only have 10 watts, and we in this room have much, much more than 2,000 watts. In this room, well, in the United States, we use about four times the average, so closer to 8,000 watts per person. In this room, probably another three times that, because we fly and we travel, and, and uh, even the very fact that we're here with air conditioning and so on, we probably use quite a bit more than 8,000 watts per person every day. But 8,000 watts per person every day is like having 10 horses running full out for you all day long to give you the comfort and conveniences that we have in our life. So that just shows you how big a part energy is to our lifestyle. 
And like I said, everybody else would be like to be like us. We use a lot more than the rest of the world, and they're going to catch up. So coming up with a way to create that energy cost-effectively is an enormous opportunity. So in the United States, just as an example of how we love our fossil fuels, we now have 1.8 billion, 1.8 people per household, but 1.9 cars per household. We have more cars per household than people in the United States. And the, worst, the rest of the world's catching up. China's catching up with a lot, lot more vehicles, vehicle sales that are just through the roof. By 2050, so today we use 15 terawatts, but with population growth and with more normalization of energy usage, the, the total world estimate is 50 terawatts. So we have 15 terawatts today, 50 terawatts in 2050. How are we going to make up that gap? Right now, that gap is made up by 85% of our energy use is fossil fuels. And you can see from this graph of use of fossil fuels how fast it took off after World War II. There was a big burst in our lifestyle and in our comfort and in all of our um, uh, productivity by our increasing use of fossil fuels after World War II. But what are we going to do about all the fossil fuel burning? Where are we going to put it? Well, right now, we put it all in our atmosphere. This thin sliver of our atmosphere is the trash bin for all the fossil fuels we burn. And to help visualize that, because we hear all these numbers about parts per million of carbon in the atmosphere and how many pounds we're putting up, and it just sounds like a huge number, I tried to compare it to the trash that we produce on Earth. So on Earth, we produce 7 billion pounds of trash per day, so about one pound of trash per person. So every, bit, every day, we're making about one pound of trash that we put in landfills somewhere on Earth. But in that same day, every person on Earth puts 31 pounds of CO2 into the atmosphere. So we're throwing 30 31 times as much stuff into the atmosphere as we're putting away into our landfills for every person on Earth every day. That's got to stop. We're going to fill up that space. That thin sliver can't continue to hold all of that. So how do we make up that 35 terawatt gap and not throw all that stuff in the atmosphere? There's only six ways. It's nuclear, geothermal, wind, tidal power, biomass, and solar. And all of those can contribute several terawatts to the 35 terawatt gap, but one of them contributes 15,000 terawatts to that 35 terawatt gap, and that's solar. Solar is the one thing that provides dramatically more than the Earth will ever need, no matter how much population. So finding a way to effectively harness that is this huge opportunity. Fortunately, the sun is the most distributed natural resource there is. Pretty much everywhere where there's people, there's sunshine. So it's, the, it's very fairly distributed for us if we can harness it effectively. The, now about the growth of the opportunity. The exponential growth of solar has completely been dramatic, exceeded all expectations. You can see this graph here of global PV installations. Also, the price drop is equally dramatic. The costs have been going down for 10% per year for more than 30 years. There was a magical point, well, back when solar panels first came out, they were $79.40 per watt in 1976. There was a, a hope that someday they would cross $1 per watt, and that would be magical. And that happened a few years ago. I just came back from the Solar Power International Show in Las Vegas last week, and they're at 42 cents a watt, 42 cents a watt for solar panels. That's just unbelievable how much opportunity that that brings. The, the, the um, uh, installations are going up dramatically. Globally, by country, it's going up dramatically. And it's not only just solar that's going up. Wind energy, look at the exponential on wind energy. Global lithium ion battery market, that's going exponentially. So all of the things, solar, wind, storage, all of these opportunities are really going at exponential rates. Just one more example of how fast it's going relative to forecast. Back in 2002, some of the most aggressive forecasts of how big the solar market would be in 2010 was one gigawatt a year. In actuality, in 2010, that goal was exceeded by 17 times. It was 17 gigawatts in 2010. And last year, it was 58 times, 58 gigawatts last year. So it's going beyond everybody's most hopeful expectations made back at the turn of the century. The renewable investments are happening at a faster pace than fossil fuels. It crossed over in 2010. And going forward, renewable investments are going to dominate. The green bars here are renewable investments, and the gray bars are fossil fuel investments. Fossil fuel investments going down, renewable going dramatically up. And most importantly, in all past times, when oil prices dropped, renewable investments dropped precipitously. This is the first time we're seeing right now where oil prices dropped and renewable investments keep on going up. Finally, people have figured out that this opportunity is so big that they're continuing to invest even as oil prices drop. That's what's so dramatic and exciting about this. It's great news. It's really great news. 
So what is Idea Lab working on? I'm working on a whole bunch of different things. We're starting companies in as many areas as we can, and I'd love to talk to you here more about new things we could do together. I'm working on waste heat recovery, boosting PV panel output, new types of insulation methods to reduce cost, new solar concentration methods, new types of energy storage, and microgrids. Uh, one of the companies we're working on makes a Stirling engine that is 33% efficient at low temperature. It's world record setting efficiency. And what that allows us to do is take waste heat from diesel exhaust or other exhaust manufacturing processes and make extra electricity. Another company we're working on, PV Booster, we just announced this company last week at Solar Power International, is an individual two-axis tracker for PV panels that boosts the output by 31%. This is great for commercial rooftop solar. I learned this fact that I couldn't believe. There's 50 billion square feet of commercial rooftop in the United States, 50 billion square feet, and only 2% has solar on it right now. So there's 49 billion square feet of opportunity to do something like this to make solar more cost effective right on top of our buildings. In addition, this can be used on carports to make solar more efficient on carports. And for carports, there's 100 billion square feet of parking lots in the United States alone. So by putting a two-axis tracker on a PV panel, you can effectively pay for the carport. Right now, carports are too expensive. But with this technology, you can make carports affordable. Another technology we're working on is something that I learned about from the Hawaii Verge conference. In Hawaii, where renewables have huge energy penet penetration, there's a problem at noon every day where there's sometimes too much energy. There's sometimes too much energy from PV, so there's a problem called curtailment, where you have to get rid of the excess energy. And some days in Hawaii, about 200 days a year, there's 140 megawatts of curtailed energy, renewable energy that has to be thrown away. We need energy storage so we can take that renewable energy and use it whenever we need it. So I'm working on a new solution because chemical batteries are way too expensive for bulk energy storage. Chemical batteries are fine for an electric vehicle, dense, single-use energy storage, but for bulk energy storage for the grid, batteries are still way too expensive. So we're working on a thermal battery that can store heat and then convert it back to electricity. We heat rocks to 500 degrees Celsius. We can then store energy 50 times cheaper than batteries. Here's a comparison of what batteries cost for energy storage and what this rock technology costs for energy storage. It's so dramatically cheaper. So we're working to roll this out in Hawaii to try and solve part of that curtailment problem and then use that elsewhere in the world as renewables take bigger impact, bigger effect. And then finally, working on microgrids. One of the biggest problems with renewable energy is everybody wants their power 24-7, and you can't count on solar or wind to be available when you need it. So by s concentrating solar, heating the rocks, and producing energy on a 24-7 basis, we can finally have completely dispatchable solar energy, another technology we're working on at Idea Lab. So these and many other things are just examples of some of the huge opportunities. For that last technology, we completed a full-scale demonstration in Pasadena, and we'll be rolling out a demonstration in Hawaii at the Nelha facility in Kona next. Finally, in summary, we will get to majority renewable energy this century. There'll be many different solutions to get there. Just, those are just some of the things that we're working on, but there's so many different things, including all the ones that are being shown here at the show. It's not just about saving the planet. It's also an enormous economic opportunity. And I personally believe that entrepreneurship is one of the best ways to mobilize great minds to tackle this problem. The opportunities in renewable energy are just staggering. I'd love to talk to all of you here about more ways we could work together to make this happen. We're looking for partners and distributors and investors and ideas to try and make more things happen to disrupt this space. Please feel free to contact me. My email address is bill at idealab.com. Thank you very much. You've been a great audience.